Hello my international darlings and welcome back to another video in Mary Boo's channel. And yes, that's me. Few weeks ago I posted a video called Nowhere Boy, the movie that annoyed Paul McCartney. And happily, it was the most successful video on this channel. I loved doing it and it was so nice to know that you guys like this kind of content, so I plan on making more of it. Following the same format, such as analyzing and talk about a Beatles movie, today I'm going to talk about two of us. And let's already say that Paul's opinion about it was very different from his Nowhere Boys critiques. If you didn't watch this video I am talking about, you can click on a card appearing on the screen right now or wait until the end screen of this video. Two of Us is a VH1 production released in 2000, written by Mark Stanfield and directed by Michael Lindsay Hogg, starring the actors Adam Quinn and Jared Harris. According to IMDb, in this purely fictional story, Paul McCartney drops by the Dakota to visit John Lennon in 1976. Paul is still on the top of the music world, reaching number one with his new band, Wings. John, however, has retired from public life, choosing to raise his son, Sean. Rumors are rampant that the Beatles are going to reunite to play a concert. Paul, the consummate entertainer, is intrigued by the possibilities. But John, still fighting his inner demons, is content keeping the Beatlemania a thing of the past. But even though the two men are still odds over the band, they rediscover that they still have bonds from the past that will never go away. Besides being a fiction, Two of Us is based on a real happening. On April 24th, 1976, Paul was on a tour with the Wings and he actually visited John at his apartment, Dakota, in New York City. That day was also when the album Wings at the Speed of Sound reached number one in the US charts. That's right, America's brand new number one Wings at the Speed of Sound. Congratulations. Uh, don't number forget one. Paul's big tour. Uh, thanks. First time in the US in 10 nice. years. We don't know exactly what happened that day, just a few things that Paul and John said in interviews. And the movie's premise is to imagine, to create a realistic scenario about the relationship between these two rock stars. In the beginning of the movie, they already say it's fiction. And that's one of the things that I personally like the most about this production. The honesty. The information we have about this specific date are few but they are worth mentioning. In the evening, they watch the television show NBC's Saturday Night, the late night comedy show, which in 1977 became Saturday Night Live. Lennon had turned in to see the appearance of the loving spoonfuls John Sebastian, but they had a greater surprise when Larn Michaels, during this particular episode, offered $3,000 for the Beatles to reunite on the show. In the book All We Are Saying, written by David Schaff and published in 1980, John told about this day. Paul and I were together watching that show. He was visiting us at our place in Dakota. We were watching it and almost went down to the studio, just as a gag. We nearly got into a cab, but we were actually too tired. He and Linda walked in and he and I were just sitting there watching the show and we went, haha, wouldn't it be funny if we went down, but we didn't. Two of us referenced this in one of the final scenes of the movie, in a beautiful way. <laughs> Let's do it. They had such delicacy and tenderness to portraying their relationship in a realistic way. Mimesis is something so important in art, and I feel like they really dived deep into their personalities. They studied a lot about it, and when you watch the movie, you have the sensation that the production really knew what they were doing. I think one of the reasons that made this movie so sensitive and truthful is the fact that the director of it, Michael Lindsay Hogg, had also filmed the Beatles for Let It Be, and promo clips for the singles Paperback Writer and Hey Jude. Michael saw at least a little what the Lennon McCartney chemistry was all about, and he did a magnificent job reproducing it. 
Another information we have about the newer reunion that later became the basis for the movie is that the following day of it was supposedly the last time John and Paul saw each other. Although they were on good terms, the encounter was not a success. McCartney turned up unannounced at the Dakota building where Lennon lived and was turned away. In the same book I mentioned it earlier, John said, That was a period when Paul just kept turning up at our door with the guitar. I would let him in, but finally I said to him, Please, call before you come over. It's not 1956 and turning up at our door isn't the same anymore. You know, just give me a ring. He was upset by that, but I didn't mean it badly. I just meant that I was taking care of a baby all day and some guy turns up at the door. The actors Jada Harris and Aidan Quinn were also a huge spot on. They are quite similar in looks to John and Paul, but not that similar to the point that it's kind of creepy to watch, like Gary Bakewell in Bake Beat. Honestly, I don't consider the similarity of the actor with the real person that important, but it has to be believable. Imagine someone making a movie about your life and casting a person that looks completely different from you. It's uncanny and a bit disrespectful, I guess. That's why I think casting Harris and Queen was a brilliant decision, especially because Harris's acting gave me goosebumps. He really got the attitude and mannerisms of Lennon so right. Nancy and Cherry wrote that Harris and Queen are superb, capturing accents, mannerisms, and behavior of their two famous characters. More than a fine job of imitation, Harris and Queen get beyond the trappings of fame and show us two men, former best friends, who have gone separate ways and no longer know how to recapture that friendship. To further prepare for the role of Paul McCartney, Aiden Quinn traveled to Liverpool with the actor Ian Hart, who portrayed John Lennon in the 1994 film Backbit. By the way, I really want to make a video about this movie. Tell me what you think in the comments. While there, he visited a number of places, including McCartney's childhood home. Quinn talked about McCartney's reaction to the film in April 18, 2004 interview. Just after I finished the film, I went on a holiday and Paul McCartney was staying in the same place. I met him and we became quite friendly. Later, he saw the film and fortunately, he liked it. It would have been terrible if he'd hated it. As I said before, one of my favorite things about this movie, despite the elevator scene, which is the sweetest thing ever, is the honesty. Two of Us never sold itself as a biographical movie. It was always about the imagination, the creation, the what if. That's the biggest discrepancy between the film and Our Boy. There is a big difference in making a fictional movie since the beginning of it and claiming it as a fiction when people start to question it. Our Boy doesn't look like fiction. Anyone who doesn't know much about John Lennon's life would easily believe that everything in the movie is true. As I said in my other video about it, it looks like the writers didn't think John Lennon's real story was good enough and they added up a lot of things so it would be more attractive. Two of Us follows the opposite path. They kept it minimalistic. And they didn't need to add stuff to make it bigger because they studied and understood the real accents of Lennon McCartney. They were enough to create something based on it. To end this video, I would like to mention what Lauren Zalesnik, VH1 Senior Vice President of Original Programming and Development, said about Two of Us. This movie is all about two souls arguably the most famous musicians of our time. It's not an excuse for a Beatles hit parade. And I couldn't agree more. 
Two of Us is my favorite Beatles related movie and I strongly recommend it for anyone who is a Beatles fan or just want a good film to watch. Despite its small budget, which makes sense because they made a truthful piece of art made for television, not an investment, using the Beatles names to make millions of box office. They made a touching, beautiful and precise experience for the viewers. Money can't buy love, talent, nor capture the essence of those two geniuses. And that's all that matters after all. So we're alone. Yeah. You, me, and everything between us. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please press the thumbs up button so I can know what type of content you guys enjoy. If you want more, subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Friday so you already know when to come back for more. My social media is on the screen right now. Follow me there and let's be friends. I see you in the next video. Bye bye.